I am a formula, not a dance. I decide who advances and who stands no chance. What am I? If you want to serve the search engine algorithm, you're right. In this video, I'm going to share with you my personal journey as I started with freelance SEO content writing. I'll also share my insights about the current and future state of SEO, so you can decide if it's the right move for you. So I remember the first SEO keyword that really took off. It was an article about Gumroad, and it happened because Gumroad were increasing the commission they took when someone sold products through their platform. I wrote the article, and almost immediately after I published the post online, I saw that it had started to receive traffic. Google Analytics was showing hits on the article, and a few days later, the Google Search Console also started showing the keyword ranking in a very high position. And I remember that particular keyword because it was one of the first ones that really took off almost immediately. And the first one is always kind of the sweetest. So that is one thing that I remembered. It was a an article where there were a few affiliate links. So by ranking for that keyword, I got a few commissions as well in return. So there was also that monetary aspect to make it last longer in memory. The first site that's ranking for a particular keyword gets on average around 31% of all traffic that types in the specific keyword, which is a big amount of viewers. The second, third, fourth, anything else beyond that, then gets a smaller and smaller percentage of traffic. So you don't really stand a chance if you're ranking on page two or page three for specific keywords, and there are ways to increase that ranking over time. And the good news is that having the right SEO skills can help you increase those rankings. So you get higher rankings, more people clicking on your links, coming to your website, and taking the actions that you want. Having the right SEO skills also allows you to manage client expectations. Sometimes clients expect a lot of results in a very short period of time. But in reality, it doesn't work that way. If someone wants to rank for a high value keyword within a few weeks, chances are that even the best SEOs won't be able to do that unless they're using some kind of black hat techniques, which long term is really not a good idea. Also, when you have the right SEO knowledge, you'll be able to use the tools that are available and this always is a list that gets updated in the way they are intended to be used to help you make decisions. The SEOs that rely on tools to make 100% of their decisions generally find that they backfires. Recently, a lot of AI tools have come out and while they are super helpful and can help you get more work done, if you're just pushing content out for the sake of pushing content out, you might find yourself in a bad spot right now. As there are many sites that lost a lot, and I'm speaking here like 50% and even more, of their traffic with the latest Google updates, but I'll get to those updates in a second. One thing to keep in mind is, is that SEO consists of three main pillars or main categories. And first you have on-page SEO. So this is the stuff that you can really control and includes your site content, title tags, meta tags, headers, internal linking and image optimization. Then you have off-page, which is link building, content marketing, etc. And you have technical SEO, which is still a very important factor in search engine optimization. This includes size speed, structured data, canon, canonicals, XML sitemaps, hoplang, and everything else. Definitely not something that I will get into in this video, but what I will say is that it's good to be aware of these three distinct categories and their importance in SEO, because they will make you a better SEO if you want to go down this route, or even an SEO freelance writer and consultant. You can give advice, you can be able to identify issues, why your content might not be ranking as high as you expect, and get people that are more specialized to fix the stuff that is broken. So it's good to be aware of what SEO actually entails. Let's now speak about the importance of SEO for freelance writers, because you might be thinking, I don't need to know SEO if I'm a writer. After all, I'm not doing the technical SEO or I'm not doing link building. So why should I bother with knowing SEO? You should bother because using the right SEO techniques will ensure that the content you have on your site or the client site is top quality. You will be able to understand which keywords you should be writing about, even if you're not targeting them directly 
as used to happen before, and I'll get to that in a second, and you'll be able to understand the importance of the user experience. If you have a site where no one is able to navigate, where it takes users tons and tons of energy to understand how to click to get to where they want to go, chances are that you will get penalized by search engines. So even from the aspect of creating your site to how the user spends time on your site, it is all part of SEO and having this knowledge will make you a better writer. Imagine a gourmet chef, right? That wants to cook this delicious meal. The chef first chooses his ingredients and he goes for the top notch ingredients. He doesn't go for any ingredients that he finds, I don't know, lying around on the street. He goes to the right shop, picks the right ingredient, tests them out, and then decides which ingredients to pick. And in a way, this is similar to keywords. You're not just going to write about any keyword under the sun. You want to get the most out of the keywords you write about, which means you need to choose the right keywords. Then the chef uses spices as he's cooking. And this is how you integrate everything together. The content you create, the images, the videos, anything that goes on the page is carefully crafted together to create the final output that you want. And similar to how the chef knows how long the food should be on the stove and the temperature it should be cooked at, that is also how you should approach SEO. You're fine tuning, you're getting feedback, you're improving to always get a better cooked meal. Or in this case, better optimized content. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever struggled to rank content? Because if so, chances are that you had something that was either missing or faulty in the way that you prepared your SEO content. And in today's world, in this user first approach kind of methodology that Google is really focusing on, having the right things in the right sequence, in the right quantity and all that is super important. You can't just write an SEO article, publish it online and expect it to rank. If people don't get what they are looking for when they land on your site, article, that page won't be shown at the top of the search engines for that keyword. So you need to really come in with a user first approach. So think about the last article that you clicked on through a search engine. Think about the keyword that you used and why you searched for that article. I'll wait. Got something? Great. So think about that article. Why did you search for that keyword? What was the user intent? What was your intent behind doing that search? Did you want to get more information? Did you want to buy a product? Were you just curious and wanted to be entertained? Because the type of query that you type into Google plays a big role. And as a freelance SEO content writer, you need to be in the mindset of the person searching for that keyword. If someone is searching for information, they're looking for a specific type of content. Let's say that they want to learn how to do something. So they're looking for steps. Step one, step two, step three, how to get something done. If they're looking for the best type of something, they're generally very close to making a purchase because they're comparing different products to find the best one for themselves. So understanding the keyword you're writing for, even if you're creating content with the user in mind, rather than the search engine in mind, you still need to have that user intent always at the front of your mind. So there is this famous quote in the art of war, which states, strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat. And the same applies to SEO. The first part as an SEO content writer is that you need to have this strategy down. You need to understand why you're doing something. You need to understand what the long-term plan is. Because without it, all the tactics that you might try to implement won't have any effect and might even backfire. For example, keyword optimization, backlink building, content optimization, it all doesn't serve any purpose unless it's part of a bigger strategy. And on the other hand, the inverse also applies. You can have the best strategy in the world, but if you're not doing the things that make it work, again, putting out the right content, being consistent, building backlinks, then the strategy doesn't serve anyone. So the two things, the strategy and the tactics must work hand in hand. And as a freelance SEO content writer, you stand with one foot in one door and the other foot in the other. So it's a good area to be in to see what is happening both in the short and the long term. 
in the strategy and the tactics. So let's speak a bit more about these different strategies and tactics. Number one is the keyword research part. Doing keyword research is a video that I will create in the future that is in and of itself. It will require that we dive deep into it to understand the type of keywords we're going after, the combination of informational keywords versus transactional keywords, and a bunch of other stuff. We will look into my favorite SEO tool and come up with examples of how to find the right keywords. Next, you have the actual content creation. So once you know what keywords you're going to target, you will create content. In the past, this was very process driven, or there are tools that still exist like Server SEO, where you're creating content to target specific keywords. Server SEO gives you an idea of the keywords to include and also how many times to include them. Again, this was more of a traditional approach where you're focusing on creating content that is more SEO focused. But now most SEOs agree that it should be that content is created with the user in mind first. So you're trying to solve the question that the reader has. You're trying to give them all the answers they need so they don't hit the back button and end up on your competitor's website. But instead, you're giving them all the information from your website. As a result, you're creating quality content. Now, quality is always subjective, but in this context, it means that the user gets a satisfactory answer. Another key SEO strategy is backlink building. As you are starting out, especially you need to build links from other people's website back to yours. And these links need to be relevant, which means that you can't get a site in any industry, especially so-called suspicious industries to link back to your site and expect to get the same benefits. You need links from high quality websites back to your site. And again, this is a whole other video in and of itself, but building backlinks is still 50% of the whole SEO process with the other 50% being content creation. What I'll say is that when it comes to building backlinks, there are different ways how you can get them. You can pay someone to put links on their site. You can write guest posts. You can participate in exchanges where people do a three-way backlink building campaign. So there are different ways. Some are safer than others. At the end of the day, the question is, are you providing value? That is the question to always keep in mind. When I began my journey as a freelance SEO content writer, in a way, I was lucky. It was the very beginning of AI tools and Let's say that the results weren't very satisfactory. There was a lot of editing that needed to happen for the articles to go live, but it was the very beginning of that phase. I think it was around the beginning to middle of 2021. Tools like ChatGPT didn't exist back then, and the tool that I used at the beginning and still use occasionally was called Jarvis or Jasper or Conversion AI. Nowadays has been built into a great tool, plenty of templates, image generation, so still highly recommended that you check it out if you're interested in that kind of tool. So back in that time, people were understanding that you could publish a lot of articles with AI. Many SEOs were pushing this to the limit, publishing daily, twice daily, three times daily. The problem was that the higher the output, the lower the quality, unless there were specific frameworks and checks and systems in place, which most of the time there weren't. So over the last couple of years, Google really cracked down on low quality content. And I'm not saying low quality AI content on purpose, because I believe that if the AI content can satisfy the user intent, there's nothing wrong with it. If, again, it satisfies the user intent, and I don't think we're at the stage where purely AI content can do that, even in the way content is created, there's something off in the way it is expressed. It's not like I'm having a face-to-face -face conversation with a friend at a coffee shop. There's some things that need to be edited before publishing. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. If you are starting on your journey to creating SEO content, not be afraid of using AI. At the same time, understand that it's not the end all be all to content creation. You will need to understand what makes a SEO tick. You need to understand that people at the end of the day are people. And you need to understand what they are looking for when they type in specific queries into Google. If you can give them the answers to those queries, 
then whether you use AI and edit the articles, whether you do the writing 100% of the time or anything in between, I think you will be in a very good spot. But you really need to understand the value of what you are creating. So it is the role of an SEO freelance content writer, because at the end of the day, knowing what is expected of you is key if you are to deliver on these expectations. So let's speak about the responsibilities and the skills needed to be successful at this craft. I think the biggest responsibility is understanding what audience really needs. Because as I said, it's easy to create content that is no longer a barrier to entry. What is difficult is understanding what the user is searching for and how to best deliver it. And doing your audience research or market research, knowing what your audience pain points are, what they want to get to, as in their pleasure points, what their hopes, dreams, aspirations, why they're even on your page. That is very, very important. And I think as a content writer, that is one of the best things that you can dedicate a lot of time to. The next responsibility of a freelance SEO writer should be to stay on top of things. In a way, continuous learning. If I try to rank an article in the same way I did it a few years ago or even a few months ago, chances are that that won't work and it might actually backfire. I might actually lose organic rankings. Instead, I need to know what is working now. I need to stay updated in terms of Google updates, what other SEOs are saying in different forums, and then testing and seeing what actually works and what doesn't. At the end of the day, there's things that people have done that gave them the results that they wanted, but it's also a process of testing and trying different things. You need to be adaptable and be open to things not working. And when things work, you need to double down on that and do more of it. Next up, a freelance SEO content writer needs to manage clients, needs to manage their expectations, the workload, at the same time, taking care of himself or herself. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not able to create articles that drink. That's the first thing. At the same time, building good relationships with clients where you know where you stand with them and they know where they stand with you in terms of their expectations is super important. Especially in the SEO game where results do not happen overnight. There's weeks and months of waiting before things start to pop off. You need to be in communication with clients. You need to tell them what's happening. You need to tell them about the good results that you get. And you need to tell them about expectations when things aren't hitting as they expect. So client communication, having that relationship with clients is super important. And in a way, being a freelance SEO content writer is like Spider-Man or Peter Parker. And you might be thinking, where is this going? So before Peter Parker got bitten by a spider, he didn't know about the powers that he would have, right? He was just an ordinary guy going to school, I believe, getting booted and all that. He got bitten by the spider, which is like discovering SEO and the potential of what this can offer. In a way, his eyes opened up to the possibilities. He then tried different things. Some worked, some didn't. And this is similar to SEO. You're trying new things, some will work, many won't you might end up falling flat on your face a few times. But that's okay. You're always learning. You're getting the feedback and you're doing better the next time around. Eventually, Spider-Man got a handle on his skills. He was able to fly everywhere, jump from bridge to bridge, you know, hang on to walls and all the stuff that he was able to do. And in a way, that's similar to SEO. You're getting better, you're getting the results you want, but you can't get too confident. Because if you do, Google will come along and tell you we have a problem. So always be aware of what's happening, always stay on top of things, because it is the key to long-term success. Let's now speak about how to get started as an SEO freelance content writer. And this involves a few steps. Number one is creating a portfolio. Now you might be thinking, if you have never had any SEO jobs, what can I include in my portfolio? And that is a good question. There's nothing holding you back from actually doing the writing. There is nothing holding you back from creating your own blog. So keep that in mind. You don't need to wait for anyone to give you permission to start doing the writing. Just like you don't need to wait for anyone to start learning about SEO. And this is a very important mindset to have 
as you start your freelance business. So you've written up your articles, you started building your portfolio. The good thing is that a portfolio can be updated over time. As you add more experience, as you add more clients, as they give you testimonials, you can add it to your portfolio and you should. After you have your portfolio ready to go, number two is finding gigs. Finding gigs means that you someone that has a problem that needs content and you are there to service that need. You're there to create content that gets the person to rank higher in search engines. Keep in mind that while you are creating content that is what you do, at the end of the day, the client doesn't really care. What they want is people on their site to buy their products or services. They want people on their site to opt in to their email newsletter. You're not just selling content writing because anyone can do that and even AI tools can do that. You're selling the solution that the client wants, not just SEO writing. Number three is that you're setting your rates. As you get more experience, you're able to charge more. And essentially, there is only two ways to make more money as a freelancer. Number one is to get more clients, but that will quickly reach its limit because there is a set amount of time, set amount of hours where you can write. The second is to charge each client more, which is one of the best ways to make more money in your freelancing business. Again, a bit out of the scope for the purpose of this video, but keep that in mind that your rates will need to go up if you want to make more money, obviously. And there are these two ways how you can do it. Number four is learning about and investing in SEO tools. As you get better as your craft, you start to understand what is good quality output and what is bad quality output. Being able to make the differentiation means that you can also understand which tools save you time and which tools are not worthwhile. There are many tools that can help with SEO and give you back time by applying leverage so you're doing less work to get more output. Knowing which tools work will give you the ability to do more work or to focus on better, higher paying work. And finally, you need continuous learning. Again, I've spoken about this before, but it's super important. You always need to stay on top of things and learn about whatever is coming next. If you try to stay at the same level, I believe that you are falling behind. So the only way to move forward is to actually move forward, to learn more, to do more, to increase your skills. All right, so in this video, I spoke about what is a freelance SEO content writer, how I started my journey, what I think is important currently when it comes to creating content and what the future might look like in terms of artificial intelligence and how these tools can help you as the writer be more productive while not doing the job completely by themselves. So very important distinction. If you found this video useful, hit the like and subscribe button. And also if you haven't checked out the freelancing getting started checklist, Check out the link in the description for that. It will give you the steps you need to follow to get going with your freelancing business. So check it out if you haven't. I'll speak to you in the next video.